Our first guest is in his eighth year as the Dodgers manager. He has a winning percentage of 630. That equals an average of 102 wins per season. It's the best record for a career of any manager in the modern day Major League era. He's a World Series champion as a player and also, of course, as a manager of the 2020 Los Angeles Dodgers. Let's hear it for Dave Roberts. Welcome, Dave. Yeah, I, I don't hear David very often. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's good. Just when you were in trouble growing up? That's right. That's right. David? Which was quite often. Um, this is a great turnout, and thank you guys uh, for being here. And I, I just love hearing uh, the names of the Dodger greats um, because, uh, you know, Oral giving us a little footnote on each guy. Man, this is uh, special to have uh, all these guys here. I want to begin talking about this team, Dave, because Mookie Betts said recently it's not the most talented team that he's been on in his time here in Los Angeles, but he said it's the closest team. And you said recently to the USA Today, this is your favorite team that you've had here in your eight years with the Los Angeles Dodgers. What is it about this team? Yeah, I, I, I think I stand by that. Um, you know, talent is all relative. We've had a lot of talented teams here. Um, but I think if you look at the roster, um, you know, last year's roster, I think on paper, which we all know that you don't win games or championships on paper, was probably more talented, was more talented. Um, but I think this, uh, the reason I went out and said that this is my favorite team is because uh, when you sit in my chair, you look at the, the chemistry, the culture, and how guys interact, and how they pull for one another, um, how they're unselfish. And so I see that more in this team than any team before. So with that, it makes my job a lot more gratifying and, and to be quite honest, much easier. You know, Skipper, uh, when I was in uniform in spring training with you, you always said, you guys need to teach. You're not just here to watch and observe and sign autographs, but you're here to teach. And you continue, even though your title is manager, you continue to this day to teach. Yeah, I, I think that the thing is, is I just love that part of it. I didn't go into uh, coaching uh, to manage. I went into coaching uh, after playing because I wanted to teach and, and pour into players and uh, always trying to learn about the game and learn different nuances, different facets of it. Um, and I'm just fortunate because our coaches, uh, we have great coaches and they're, they're great teachers and um, players don't care what you know until they know you care. And our guys care and they want to teach and every single day when you get here early if you do get here early they're doing the fundamentals and uh, fortunately for us it shows up on a nightly basis but absolutely oral the thing I look forward to coming to the ballpark every day is I get the opportunity to teach one of the things Dave that so many of your players talk about is just how great the culture is in that clubhouse so anytime you come up on the trade deadline and you're bringing in new guys I imagine you have to also think about fit along with talent you brought in five guys and yeah sure it's not the Trey Turner, Max Scherzer type of deals, but all five of these guys you've brought in have all helped out tremendously, and they all seem like a great fit here. Yeah, they are, and I, you know, I think we'll start with, uh, you know, Joe Kelly, and so Joe was really just kind of came in here and mariachi joe and he's from riverside a dodger fan so he and the fans just hit it off from the get-go and it certainly didn't hurt that he threw one up and into carlos correa so i think that that right there you guys all love so to get him back was was pretty easy and um he's kind of got a little elbow thing but he'll be back ready for the stretch run and bringing kike back another fan favorite so i know that you know, it's one of those things that players just get are comfortable in certain environments. And so for him, I know he enjoyed his time in Boston, but to get back here, uh, he said he felt like he was back home. So we're seeing the fruits of what talent he is. And then you get Lance Lynn, a guy that uh, we essentially just bet on the upside. He's got an elite fastball. He's a competitor. He wanted to be in Los Angeles and, you know, just wanted a chance to win. So here we've got a chance to see him for three starts, and he's been fantastic. 
Um, Ahmed Razari is a guy that if you had a chance to spend time with him, uh, you'd want to take him home with you. <laughs> he, he is just the sweetest guy. And as far as pure talent, Oral, I would put him up against any one of our guys as far as pure talent. Um, so he even... You know, was open to playing second base for us, playing mostly versus left-handed pitching. And he's like, you know, Doc, whatever you need from me, I'm going to do it and help this team. I just want to win a championship. And uh, who's the last one? Ryan Yarbrough. Ryan Yarbrough. How do I forget Yarb? So, you, I, you know what? I, I joke a lot about Will Smith, who's just sort of vanilla. And everyone <laughs> loves vanilla ice cream, right? So Will is like vanilla. But uh, Yarbs is cut from that same cloth. Um, he is a super guy. He's a starter, but he's pitched in relief. And we just finished a stretch of 13 games in a row. And you went 12-1, so and one, by the way. We did go 12-1. <laughs> um, but I will tell yeah. you this. If we didn't have guys that we acquired at the deadline, it wouldn't have happened. And Ryan Yarborough uh, has taken some valuable innings for us uh, that we've needed. So we're very grateful to have all those guys. Yeah. Best team in baseball since June 20th. Best team in baseball since August 1st. Best team in baseball since the trade deadline, whatever date you want to pick. And it really started to come together when the bullpen got it together, right, Dave? It, it did. And I, I think that for me, when I saw the pen uh, coming into the season, and I was very confident. Uh, guys have performed well. Guys have pitched in big leverage spots, so they had some experience. Um, and, and in the beginning, we were just sort of trying to feel our way out, you know, into the season, like anything. And, um, you know, the, I'm sensitive to the pen because um, they don't get the credit that they deserve ever. And uh, when it doesn't go well, it's either my fault or it's their fault. So I feel very sensitive to those guys because they're fantastic. And, you know, we've righted the ship. And uh, a guy that you guys are going to get to uh, get to know a little bit later this evening, um, it wouldn't be our pen and it wouldn't have been righted if it wasn't for this guy. And that's Evan Phillips. So uh, he's our closer. He is, uh, you know, you talk about most valuable players for mm -hmm. 2023. This guy is right there in the conversation with Mookie and Freddie, 1,000%. And certainly had an argument to be an all-star as well. That's this a whole other discussion I'm still is. not over, but uh, hopefully... Uh, you I'll, know, I'll yeah. follow up, John. Yeah. Skipper, you got the veterans back in the rotation, so that's coming along. It's like the offense was waiting for the pitching. The pitching first came from the bullpen, and now the pitching is coming from the rotation with Kershaw back, Julio throwing the ball better, Tony with a nice solid outing, Lance Lynn you talk about, and there's only one rookie left in the rotation. That's Bobby Miller. Yeah, you know what, and I'll tell you this, is uh, Bobby's a great young man, and you guys get to see how emotional he is, and he's just getting a PhD in, in what it's like to be a major league pitcher, you know, to see the likes of Clayton Kershaw and uh, obviously Julio around, and Lance Lynn is really, in the short time that he's been here, has really taken to Bobby, which for me as a manager is really fun to see. So he, he's getting a PhD every day, and uh, he's taking it all in, and I quite honestly wouldn't have seen this happen, but to Bobby's credit, he, he's taken the opportunity and run with it, so um, it, it's fun to see him too, yeah. Coming out of the All-Star break, you guys had a really difficult schedule. You go to New York, you take two out of three. Then you go to Baltimore, best team in the American League, you take two out of three. But then something happened, Dave, between Baltimore and the first game in Texas. I think all the guys are meeting up at Max Muncy's house, getting together, and the next thing we know on that Friday, the first game in Texas, we see guys standing up on second base and doing this weird dance. When did you first get wind of the Freddy dance and when you see your guys standing on second base what goes through your mind um, yeah so uh, so um, it, it was great speak from your heart skip speak great from your heart, heart. yeah it, don't give us the canned this answer is, yeah, okay give, give, give me the good one okay first <laughs> off Max did have something at his house for his daughter and what the coolest thing was is that everyone showed up and even Guys that didn't have families in town or guys that had little ones showed up and they had a great time. So that was something that was telling for me. Um, so we get to the next day, and, and I think it was Freddie who doubled. Yes. And he does this. And I wouldn't even, John, I wouldn't even call it a dance. It's not like, a dance. 
I mean, he's on second base. It's like a, a bad hula hoop effort. And, um, and that's about what he's doing right there. And it ain't good. Let me tell you something. It ain't good. Sir, do you have a designated driver? Right, right, right. But he does this thing, and everyone is on the, the dugout, top of, top of the dugout, doing this dance. And I'm like, I have no idea what has just happened. I'm happy he's on second base, but... I think for me, John, it's like you got to let these guys be themselves and have fun with it, but you won't be seeing me doing that <laughs> that movement. I thought everybody so. in the dugout had to do no, it. No, 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 no. Coaches are exempt. Okay. He always is looking down at his lineup card. When the guy reaches second, he looks down, i got to make this decision. It's a big decision. Does dance over yet? Yeah. Okay. That's let me right. just follow up, though. Who looks the most uncomfortable out there when they do it? Freddie! <laughs> See, I'm just grateful that we've got Kike back, Ahmed here, so they've got a little rhythm, and, you know, so they're going to the bullpen, so it's like Yancey and Bruce Dar, because they're looking at the bullpen, too, but, you know, it's, I mean, it's good that he's doing it because he's on second base, but, man, it, it's painful, and hopefully his <laughs> wife is letting him know how bad this looks. <laughs> You've had an unbelievable baseball life. I mean, UCLA, then a player, you know, a coach, go all through the baseball, and there's been huge changes in the game, right? I'm not going to ask you to name me the best one, but there's been a lot of huge changes this year. Are you enjoying baseball now with the new rules? I am, I am. I, I think that, you know, when you're a player or when you're a coach, you're so in it and you're so mired in the moment. Like, for me, you play within the constructs of the rules. So... Whatever rules, whatever, however long the game's going to go on, for me, I, it doesn't bother me. But as a manager and the way that it's become a lot more noisy lately with the rules, pace of play, length of game. So now as a manager and loving the game of baseball, I'm more sensitive to it. So with that, I think that they nailed it. I, I think that the way that the games are 239, the pace of play, um, guys are running more, uh, you're seeing more dynamic plays uh, in the middle of the diamond. So all that stuff, for me, now that I get take my manager's cap off, it's a much more watchable product. So I do think that the Players Association, Major Baseball, yeah, they, they nailed it. You stole at least 40 bases three times. Your career high was 49. How many bases would you steal with these enormous pizza boxes they have now and also with some of the other limitations? I'm telling you, man, I would have uh, I would have I wouldn't say I'd still be playing because that's a <laughs> foregone conclusion, but I would have stolen more base, but it's good. I, I, I think for guys like me that just don't hit homers, it just adds to a different element of the game, you know, and Maury Wills is one of my favorite players of all time and uh, so just to kind of promote, uh, you know, the base ceiling. So there's only two throwovers, and then the third, you got to get the guy out. The bigger base is, so things like that, it, it's just fun. Yeah. Go ahead, John. I want to ask you about Walker Bueller. I think uh, it's pretty remarkable we're even sitting here having a conversation about him. I think it's almost one year ago to the day that he had his second Tommy John surgery. He's throwing bullpens. He threw a simulated game the other day. And I think he mentioned that he was surprised from an execution standpoint that the ball was going to the right areas. How surprised are you that Walker Buehler possibly could be pitching for this team, whether it's September or October? Um, I I'm shocked. Um, but in that same breath, guys like Walker, they're just different. They're, they're wired mentally different. Physically, they're just freaks of nature. And um, so you can't discount that. Um, I was surprised uh, that he came, uh, put it in the universe that he was going to be back. And uh, so um, I'm going to bet on him. I'm going to bet on him. And, uh, and seeing his simulated game, uh, in Arizona, I was surprised at the execution as well. Um, but Walker, if anyone has had any time with Walker Bueller, uh, he's good in small doses. <laughs> he's very confident, to put it mildly, just slightly confident. Um, so I will put it on record. He was very good last week with his execution. I saw his simulated today, below average Walker. So uh, I saw it. Um, but he got through it healthy, so that's the main thing at this point in time. Is his learning style with you argumentative like it is with me? It's almost like he wants to argue with you to get your reasons and to make sure you're confident in your answer. Yeah, he, he certainly um, 
looks for conviction when he's arguing or debating with you. So I've just learned to walk away. So uh, I just walk away because you're not going to win it. Um, he should have been in a courtroom. So uh, if he wasn't going to be on a diamond. So I just walk away. Oral was talking earlier just about how good this team has been playing, not just the 12-1 and run here in the month of August, but an eight-and-a-half game lead right now. You've won eight in a row. Obviously, you guys are going to make the playoffs for the 11th straight year, but is there something that still keeps you up at night when you think about this team and the postseason down the road? You know, um, I, I'm not there with my mind as far as the postseason. Um, I think the one thing I will say is... Um, I, I'm, I'll manage guys a little bit differently. Like the other day, Julio could have went out for the eighth. Um, and then for me, I got to make a decision. You know, when you're looking down at the pen and everyone's ready to go, um, to what end am I going to throw, him, run him out there for the eighth inning? And so, does that have some effect on how I'm going to manage guys uh, going forward? It absolutely does. Um, what keeps me up in the postseason? I think the thing is about the postseason is it's just so uncertain. Um, you just can't have, you know, LeBron and AD and say, okay, I'm going to go to the conference finals. It just doesn't work that way in baseball. So I think the thing I love about baseball is the uncertainty. But there's no really, <clears throat> you know, until we get there, and I know the 26 guys that we have, uh, who the opponent is. Um, I'll, I'll probably have more sleepless nights then, but right now I'm still kind of trying to get through August. Is there something from all the playoff experiences? You, we know that the regular season is a marathon, and we know that the playoffs are a sprint. Is there something through all those experiences that have you? Is there a different voice in the clubhouse you're looking for? Is there a different way that they go about their business now that you've been through it so many times and understanding that uncertainty? I knew they kept telling me after my great regular season, oh, we're going to win it for sure. And I'm like, please tell me that because my nerves are not saying that. You know, it's it's hard to have that focus. Yeah, I, I think if I can say one thing that might be tangible um, is... I am going to push the uh, the urgency part of uh, the postseason, and I think that you know, in one sense, I believe that there's a certain way you play baseball, and the natural emotions, adrenaline, will manifest themselves in the postseason. And I do think that with some players, that's the case. Um, but I, I do think that uh, I'm going to push it a little bit more this year. And, you know, as a manager, you don't ever want to feel that a player say you're panicking or, you know, all this stuff. So then you got to find that balance. But the postseason, it is a sprint. And we learned this last year that it happened really quick and we're packing our bags. So I think that uh, our guys prepared and understand what's at stake. So, um, yeah, we're going to we're going to play with a sense of urgency and, and we need to playing safe does not win in the playoffs playing safe in the regular season there's so much balance between your present tense thinking your weekly thinking your monthly thinking your rehab guys coming back but in the playoffs it it does get really tight yeah it, it does and, and momentum changes uh, so much and you know the goal is to win 11 games so uh like like uh, oral said it's a sprint and uh you've got to kind of ramp it up a couple notches to get there and, and win 11 games in october yeah you brought in some guys that have won the 11 games in october you brought in jd martinez and also um jason hayward and i want to ask you about jay hay because it has to be in my mind maybe the best offseason move by any team. He comes here on a minor league deal. He wasn't even sure his phone would ever ring during the offseason for a job opportunity. And you look at him now, not just some of the best offensive numbers he's put up in years, Dave, but what does he also bring to that clubhouse in terms of leadership and mentorship for some of the younger guys? Yeah, Jason, I just, man, I think the world of him. And I, I had a chance to, to coach against him and manage against him as a player. And as a manager and a baseball guy, you're always kind of asking about guys, and everyone said the same thing about Jason is, you know, he was a pro, he, he prepared, uh, he cares about his teammates, he plays the game the right way, um, but to have him uh, in our clubhouse, get to know him even more intimately, um, I, I just think the world of him, and you know, what's interesting is that he and Freddie signed together with the Braves at 18, and so their story is that Freddie wanted to be Jason Hayward. So 
how this white guy from Orange County uh, signs with the Braves and wants to be this black guy from Chicago and playing the Braves. It's the craziest thing, but they are the best of friends. And um, so to have Jay Hay back here with Freddie, it's gone full circle. And I think that that's part of the reason Freddie has had such a great year because I always joke that he's got his little blankie back with him. So Jason is, is a big blankie, but he's got his blankie. But yeah, Jason is just so unselfish. Um, he'll do anything we ask of him. And I, I said it just publicly recently. And, you know, I think that Oral came before I did and and I, what I will say is that being what it, what is a good teammate and I do think that modern day baseball doesn't see a good teammate like when I came into the game and when Oral was in the game because for us a good teammate holds your teammates accountable when things aren't uh, done the right way and not just a guy that I can go out and get a burger with and that means he's a good teammate and lets things slide. Jason is from the old school when things aren't done right. He doesn't go to me or a coach or a trainer to say so-and-so needs to be better. He goes to the person that says, hey, we don't do it this way. And so for me, that is the ultimate teammate and ultimate pro and he gains the ultimate respect from everyone in the organization. So I just couldn't be more excited to have Jason with us. So we're going to let Dave go because yep. it's his time and he has spent time here on his off day to come out here with us and with you guys. <clears throat> Before we let you go, this is the last question. Tell us where you're headed now and how do you relax? How do you get away from this sometimes? And I know it has something to do with red wine every once in a while. <laughs> there, there's going to be red wine uh, involved <laughs> tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm heading back home. My wife and my daughter at home are going to order in. And I think we're going to do something that uh, Italian place that you recommended. Marina uh, in I, Pasadena? I think, in, yeah, that place. And then there's another new pasta place in Pasadena you got to <laughs> so try, gonna too. So we're going to do pasta. We're going to order I'll text it. you the other place, Text too. me the other place. Yeah, yeah. They fly their pasta in from Italy daily. Is that and, right? Yeah, I haven't See, been there. I, I might think, be going I think there tonight, I'm a but foodie. I don't want to tell anybody this the name. This guy is such a foodie. <laughs> no, and so no, 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 I keep no. learning more from no, Oral, which is right. amazing. So he takes very good care of me, suffice to say. So, yeah, ordering in some red wine and be ready to win a ball game tomorrow. So do you bring your own red wine? I mean, this man has his own red wine. He's got red stitch. They've got I, great I Chardonnays do. and yeah. Pinots Peter and Noir, Cabs and I've had them all in there. Amazing. Yeah. There's more coming for that. For what's that the, plug what's right the there, website John? so we can all order? You know, give yeah, us a little redstitchwine.com. Let's go. Let's order a bunch I'm of... I'm telling you, it's, that's right. it's <laughs> incredible. Hey, thank really you guys very yeah. much. Um, I, I really Every, appreciate you guys. And, round of uh, applause for Dave Thank Robert. you guys for being here. You guys are amazing. Thanks, Dave.